what I could use to change just a little bit more. Yes. Yes. Maybe an attitude, maybe a, a you know, just a hard change or something like that. You know, you ever you ever seen a time in your life you just always felt like that uh, everything just went wrong. And it seemed like you could just find something wrong with everybody around you. Uh, everybody but yourself. <laughs> I heard a little deal that's sort of funny this week is this guy was laying on the couch asleep. His kids were in there playing and they found some cheese that was just stinking. <laughs> and they took that molded cheese and they went in there and they thought it'd be funny to rub it on their daddy's mustache. <laughs> <laughs> they rubbed it on his mustache and he was there and they walked back and sat back and watched him out a little bit and he got up and he said he woke up and he said, Shh, stinks in here. <laughs> Finally he got up off the couch, went in there in the next room, he said, Shh, it stinks in here. Finally he went outside, he stood outside trying to get some fresh air, and he said, My God, the whole world. <laughs> That's about the way we are sometimes. We think everything else around us is things stinking. Probably it's us. That's right. Amen. Amen. It may be our attitude. It may be our uh, number of different things. I don't know. Maybe I kicked this uh, message off wrong. Amen. <laughs> but it is a blessing to be in God's house. That's right. I'll read a scripture to you, and I, I just titled this, Glorifying your Father. Glorifying your Father. In Matthew, the, the, the fifth chapter, verse 16, says, listen to this, says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Would you read that out loud with me so you can speak it? The Bible said... Not to be to be hearers of the word to be hearers of the word of God. Why? So that faith can come into our spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Then it says, "Don't only be hearers, but be doers yes. of God's word." So I want you to read that out loud, just as loud as you can. Maybe, maybe you override me; it'd be fine. Amen. But just read this verse with me out loud. We want the devil to hear it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know what? The devil comes to church too. Amen. Yes, that's right. Don't look at your wife and get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read it together. <laughs> Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you're God and beside you there is no other. Yes. Father, I thank you, God, that this morning I've already felt the anointing in this house. I believe somebody's going to be saved, God. I believe somebody's going to rededicate their life to you. Father, I believe this morning somebody's going to be healed for where the presence of the Lord is. There's liberty. And Father, that means we've got freedom in this house to worship you. we got freedom here. And Father, take me and hide me behind the cross because I will announce before this congregation, I can do nothing here without you, without the help of the Holy Spirit. But I will announce I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We honor you for the family that was dedicated to you today. We honor you for the young lady that's going to come here just in a little bit to be baptized. Father, we ask you to touch her. Have your way. Those that are here this morning, their hearts are heavy because, God, this is a day of decoration that, that they're remembering their loved ones. And their hearts are heavy today. I ask you, God, to just comfort them. And God, I ask you to touch Sister Marie. Again, God, she's in her 80s. Been a member of this church for 60-some years. We thank you, God, that you're touching her and that she's here with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, would you give the praise band a hand?
person next to you a hand. And before you sit down now, would you give the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, whose name is Jesus Christ, the name above every name, and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. Yes. He is the Deliverer. Yes. He is the Savior. Woo. He is King. I ain't waiting to get to heaven to crown Him King. He's already crowned Amen. King of Amen. kings and Lord of lords. Would you give Him a yes. shout? excited this morning. Amen. You may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about glorifying your Father. Your Heavenly Father. I believe the Word of God teaches us to honor our parents, to honor our father and our mother. But I want to just declare to you today that a mom and dad may not have treated you like a father or mother should have. But that never gave us an excuse not to honor them. And maybe you've got issues with your family. Let me say this. You've got a Heavenly Father that has never done you nothing but good. Amen. You've got a Heavenly Father that will always love you and always care for you. And He deserves all the honor and glory that we can dare issue out of our lives to Him. Amen. Now I just want to talk to you about this Sermon on the Mount just for a moment. Here Jesus is. He's went up on the mountain. He's carried His disciples up on the mountain. And He began to teach them. The Bible said in verse 2, He said, And He opened His mouth and He taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I don't believe he was talking about somebody, woe is me, down is me, oh is me. He was saying to you today, you and I, amen, that if we're feeling something poor in our spirit, we're feeling sad and maybe in our spirit, I come to tell you today, he's still God, he's still yes, King of yes. Kings, and he's still Lord, and he will still bless you when you yes. feel like you can't be blessed. Uh, amen. Yes. Then in verse 4, he said, Blessed are they that, that, that mourn, for they shall be comforted. i got to remind somebody this morning, it is a blessing to be able to mourn. It is a blessing to be able to shed tears. It is a blessing to be able, come on somebody, because Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn. Why? Because they shall be comforted. I don't know about you, but I like feeling the touch of the Holy God that we serve. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I like knowing the blessings of God upon my life. Amen. Yes. Is there anybody in this house love the blessings of God? Yes. Yes. The Word declares unto you that He will comfort. The Word declares in John 14, He said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. For in My Father's house are many mansions. Yes. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come and receive you unto Myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Yes. Amen. The Scriptures declared that Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how we're going to know the way. Jesus said this and declared it, and I'll declare it in the ear of the devil today. Then he said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the yes. truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I declare unto yes. you that Muhammad ain't the God. Oh, he's a dead God. Yes. I come to tell you those other gods, is Baal is a dead God. But Jesus is a God that's alive and yes. well. And yes. it's all yes. done in his power. Oh, come on. Yes. And on in that chapter 14, he said this in verse 26 and 7. 
He said, I'll send you another comforter because I'm going back to the Father. And while I'm preparing a place for you, I'm going to the Father and I'm going to pray. And He's going to send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost to comfort you. Yes. And oh, yes. come on somebody, yes. lead you in all truth and righteousness. He is God. And yes. today He will yes. comfort you. Somebody shout, yes. He's yes. my God. He's my God. And then the Bible declares that blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness, when we think of meekness, you know, sometimes we think it's weakness. God never did tell us that we had to be weak to be meek. Moses was a meek man, but he was not a weak man. Amen. Moses was a man that, amen, feared God and run after the things of God. Come on, somebody. Yes. I wish today that we had more men in America that really love God like we're supposed to love God. Amen. I said I wish we had more men in America that would really love their families and love to bring them up in the house of God. Yes. Bring them up in the yes. things of God. Amen. Come on yes. somebody. Yes. You could teach your family all kinds of things. But if you're not teaching them the things of God, friend, the things that you're teaching them will perish. But the things of God shall never perish. Can we give the Lord a shout? A dad that will not lead his family to, to the things of God. A dad that will not lead his family to the things of the Almighty God. And let God shine through him. Amen. Come on somebody. I'm going to deal with something. We act like every kind of filth that comes out of our mouth is okay. Amen. But it's not okay. We had somebody in Sunday school this morning testifying. I'm asking God to help me to watch my mouth while I'm on my job. Thank God for me. Set out the abundance of the heart, your mouth to speak, so you judge it for yourself. Taste on that a while. Then a the man in this house could have cussed me. I believe one time I could cuss the ticks off a bulldog. <laughs> and sometimes I get mad enough but I want to cuss how many of you here has ever got mad enough you want to cuss let yes. me start raise your hand amen <laughs> we're being honest in the house today amen. amen you know that tongue the Bible talks about it says out of the abundance of the heart and I don't know exactly why God's heading me in all this direction but I'm obeying today amen because we act like just if if we just allow a little bit of sin in our life, amen, to be, it's just, right, just a little bit come out. Just a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. Is it all right to cuss just a little bit? No. Somebody say, well, just a little bit don't hurt. You don't know my mother-in-law. <laughs> Well, I heard a little, a little deal one time where this person made a, a pie. Said if I made a pie and I put just a little bit of mess in that pie, you know what I'm talking about when I say mess, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit, would you still eat that pie? Yeah. It's just a little bit. <laughs> you said, Pastor, why are you dealing with this? Because God wants some honor and glory out of your life. And when that jump's coming out of your life, it's not bringing honor and glory. It's not bringing praise to God. It's Come on, somebody. You we deal with number. Sin is sin no matter what sin it is. Amen? Sin is sin, whether it's white sin, black sin, hallelujah sin, glory sin, whatever you call it. Amen? Amen.
He said, blessed, what's this? If you want the blessings of God in your life, there's something has to happen in your life. It is not a sign of weakness because you have a little meekness. It's not a sign of weakness because you have control of your mouth. My God, I'm telling you, I've seen it time in the church. I'm talking about in the church world where I got so mad I could have gave somebody a cussing, but I had to bite my tongue. You have a choice whether it comes out of your That's mouth. Right. Or not. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Don't tell me you. You say, well, I just lost control. Oh, I just on. lost control. Come I just on. lost control. My God, everybody in here can lose control. That's right. Amen. That's right. What would it be like in America if everybody just lost control? Oh, That's good. right. Amen. Amen. I've seen times in my life where I lost control. Amen. Amen. Can we just be honest? Yeah. It, it, did that make it right because I lost control? No. Some of y'all looking at me. I, I bet over half y'all probably cussed this week. <laughs> That's why God's had me to deal with this. I bet you right now. That, some of you right. Go ahead. Go ahead. The other half brought the ones that cussed. <laughs> Uh -huh. But watch what he says right here. He says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. God said today, He said there's got to be somebody that's hunger and thirsting after the righteousness of God. Righteousness. I want you to understand what righteousness is. It's not about how much you can shout or how pretty you can sing or how pretty you can pray. Righteousness is a gift that's given from God. Righteousness is something that God gave you. Righteousness is right standing with God. I've come to tell you that Today, you're righteous because of what Jesus made. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. My God, I, I tell you, we had a brother come in here this morning and the first thing he wanted to do was share his testimony. He said, I got delivered from drugs. I got delivered from alcohol. I got delivered from cussing. I got delivered from cussing. Amen. Yes. He began to share that. When you've been delivered from yes. something, you want to share what's happened. But yes. let me tell you something. Just because he shares that testimony does not make him righteous. It made him righteous because of what Jesus did on Amen. Amen. Yes. And then he wants to bring honor and glory to God through his life. Amen. 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 If we hungered after God's righteousness like we hunger after pinto beans, <laughs> after we had cornbread, yeah. steak, fried potatoes, <laughs> onions, come on, somebody. Yeah, yes. All that good stuff. How many times do you find yeah. yourself going? months at a time without getting hungry. How many times do you go, amen, weeks at a time without getting hungry? You know what? Most of us probably stay hungry about half the time of the day. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's Let's right. be honest. If we ain't eating three times, we're eating four times or five times, snacking in between meals. Yes. Amen. amen. <laughs> Why? We're hungry for that food that feeds this body. We're hungry for food that goes into this body. If your body craves food uh, to that extent, don't you think your spirit is craving something from yes. God? Yes. And it's the yes. Word of God. It's the precious yes. Spirit of God. Yes. God is going to do yes. something in this place today. Yes. We're just going to have to obey. Amen. That's right. Amen. Listen what he said. Blessed, blessed are they that hunger. Somebody shout, I want to be hungry. I want to be hungry. For the things of God. The things of God. Are we really hungry, church? Yes. I tell you, I tell you what I see in 99% in of the church. I could say almost 99% of the church, counting myself at times, that I've not been as hungry for God as I ought to be. Amen. I wasn't as thirsty for God as I ought to be. Come on, Amen. somebody. Amen. 
Because when you're hungry, you go eat. When you're thirsty, you go drink. Yeah. You know what God said? He said, I'm looking for America to wake up again. Once again, to come to me and get a drink. Yes. I'm looking yes. for America once uh, again. Yes. Amen. To rise yes. up and get something to eat once again. Yes. Because I'll tell you something. These other countries think they're going to wipe this country out. God's got a plan for yes. this country. He's got a plan there. Come on, somebody. God is going to use this place once again. Because well, what's this? In, in, what's this? The Scripture said in Isaiah talked about in the last days there would come a time when people would not know darkness from light or light from darkness. They would not know good from evil. Amen. And you know what? Can you see that in America? Yes. Can you see that happening there? Let me give you some good word today. The Bible said where sin abound, grace do much more abound. I come to tell somebody today that we're great, where sin is bounded here in the United States of America. There's something called grace. The unmerited favor yes. gift of God. Yes. That comes yes. You say, Pastor, why are, you, why are you dealing with this on this different levels? I want to talk to you like this. On one hand, we want, we want to say that darkness is light and light is darkness. You know when a man gets to a point that he cannot tell light from darkness, amen, something's bad wrong with his thinking. Right. Right. Amen, when he'll call good evil and evil good, something's wrong with his thinking. That's right. I said something's wrong. My God, I'm preaching, brother. Y'all shout me. I'm going to preach it in here. I don't care if the devil... Come here, devil. I I'll speak it right into his ear. Amen. I'm telling you Come right on. now, right. if we ever see in a time where people are calling good evil and evil good, it's right now. Amen. 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 But I come to tell somebody today, we're still serving a God that's on Amen. the throne. Amen. Amen. We're still serving Amen. a God today that Amen. is still setting people free. Amen. Still Still yes. saving people and still delivering them. Amen. Amen. And they're still Amen. perverted minds and perverted hearts. Come on, somebody. Yes. Well, I'm mad at the preacher now. <laughs> well, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. I don't care if you are mad at me. Come on, Come on Amen. I'm getting too old to worry about people being mad at me. That's anymore. right. Amen. That's right. I ain't but 47. <laughs> I remember when I first got in the ministry, my God, I worried myself sick, worried to death. Oh, they mad at me again. I ought to have said that. I ought to, you know, uh, you know, you battled all through the night wrestling over preaching something that might offend somebody. But you know something I found out, something about Jesus? He really didn't care who he offended. That's right. He didn't just go out and set out to offend people. But you know what? When he went out preaching, the gospel will offend you. Amen. It will either cause you to run to the cross Amen. or it will yes. offend you. Amen. It will either make you turn and walk away worse or it will make better. you better. Come Amen. on. Right. And you know what it is? It's yours and my choice what we do with it. Amen. Right. Right. So go ahead and get mad. Amen. If you're mad at me, maybe you'll leave your neighbor alone. <laughs> I'm tired of shedding tears over people that I feel like I offended with the Word of God. Amen. If there's an issue in your life where you're not hungry for God, whose fault is it? If your mind's perverted, whose fault is it? You yes. say, I can't help myself. Yeah, yes, you, you can. can. You can come to the cross yes. and find yes. mercy for yes. God. Yes, amen. Because listen to the next in verse 7. It said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yes, right. Amen. You should hear that? Merciful. Amen. A lot of times here in the, in the United States, we find it out that people ain't merciful to others like they should be. Right. Right. Come on, somebody. How long has it been? You say you're merciful. You're a merciful person. 
How long has it been since you went to the hospital and laid hands on the sick and asked Jesus to help? How long has it been since you, amen, sent some money to help somebody that was in jail? Amen. How long has it been since you went and visited a widow or an orphan? The Bible said pure and unfiled religion is visit the widows and orphans in their afflictions. Come on. Amen. Sir. Amen. Y'all think I'm mad, but I'm not. I'm just not playing games this morning. Amen. 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 Blessing, Lord. Blessed are the merciful, friend. If you cannot show mercy, how do you expect to receive mercy? Amen. 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 Remember this in Luke 18, chapter. The Bible said the two went to the temple to pray, and the Pharisee prayed thus with himself, Oh God, I thank you that I tithe and I fast and I do this. And he was talking about how wonderful he is, and he was talking about all that he did for God. And then he said, God, I thank you that I'm not like this publican man. Amen. This, this man, this publican right here. Amen. And the Bible said that publican didn't even raise his eyes up towards heaven and said, God, God be merciful to me a man that is a sinner. Can I tell you today, the Bible said when the two walked out, the one that didn't even lift up his eyes toward heaven and said, God be merciful to me a man that's a sinner. God said he walked away justified rather than the other. Yes. Yes. Amen. How can you have mercy if you don't know how to show mercy? That's right. How can you have love if you don't know how to show love? Let me ask you this, this question, just a simple question. How many friends do you have around you? The Bible said if a man's going to, in Proverbs, is going to have friends, he's got to show himself friendly. Yes. And if maybe if you look around and you ain't got no friends, you might be the problem. Amen, that's right. I heard a, a friend of mine one time told me he'd been married three times. He said after the second time, he got married the third time, ended up getting divorced the third time, and he finally figured out maybe it was him instead of them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. He'll tell you that to this day. Blessed are they that are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Can I tell you the day when you see somebody that fails God, somebody that sins against God, somebody that has messed up? What about somebody that's messed up? Uh, uh, Pastor, what about somebody that, that has let something come out of their mouth that shouldn't come out? What about somebody that's done something they shouldn't do? Let me tell you something. You, do you realize the day that God is looking to your heart? He's looking at not at your circumstance, but He's looking at your heart. David did the things that David did. David sinned against God. David brought the curse up on Israel. Amen. And can I tell you that God he will, God declared still that David was a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he had a heart that was pure before God. He had a heart that would still repent. He would bind himself. Come on, somebody. It's Amen. not somebody that's so much that has sinned. Amen. That's the problem. It's somebody that has sinned and that will not repent. Oh and bring God. it on the floor. Come God. on. Amen. Do you, does anybody get anything out of this? Amen. You say, preacher, you preaching like I'm going to hell. I ought to be preaching like everybody in here is going to hell. Amen. Amen. Because right. if it would help save one from going to hell, it would be worth it. That's Amen. right. Amen. You say, well, why, why you want to preach like that? I think we need to be preaching more like that. Amen. Because the world that we know it, why is America turning upside down like it is? Is it because the president we got in the in in the you know that's what we we want to point that president? It's the president. It's the president. What about the last ten presidents we've had? That's right. Amen. Let me say something else. We we say, well, it's Congress place. It's the schoolhouse place. Amen. It's this place, that place. No. You know whose place it is? It's mom and dad's place. Amen. To bring their family up in the things of God. It's mom and dad's place. Amen. Come on, somebody. Don't send your kids to school and expect them to learn the things of God. You teach them. That's right. We send them to church instead of go with them and they declare that they ought to make it to heaven. Let me tell you something. There's no guarantee that your children are going to make it to heaven. 
if you don't teach them about God. Amen. It blesses me when I hear somebody say a newborn baby's born into this world. They say, I want to dedicate my child to God. Amen. You know, it blesses me. It blesses me because what they're saying is, I want to, I want to give this child to God and I want to bring it up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I want it to know things. Let me say this stuff. I feel this so strong in my heart today. I can't help it. I'm going to go ahead and preach it. Amen. Let me talk to every father and mother in this house. Wouldn't it be a sad thought? that one day you make it to heaven but your child didn't make it. That's right. That's right. Come on, brother. I had a dad look at me a while back and he said this. He said, I brought my boys up wrong. He said, I brought them up to be tough. I brought them up to be mean. I brought them up to... I wanted to be the, the roughest boys on the block. But this man looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said this, I brought my kids up wrong. Why did, what was he saying? I brought my kids up wrong. It's because what he had been teaching them and all this kind of stuff once they become grown men. Amen. That stuff become the come and play. Amen. They become to be the men that he did not like seeing them. Come on somebody. It's cute when they're little. Amen. I want to use Daryl for an example. Daryl used to be his, his uncles and them would pick at him, get him to cuss and all this kind. They thought it was funny. Amen. Until he got up a little older and give them a good cussing. <laughs> But thank God somewhere along the line, the Holy Ghost of God got a hold of them and saved them. Yes. 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 I forgot how much of a chance it is for someone that has not been raised in church versus somebody that has been raised in church to get saved. Come on, somebody. Yes. Somebody that has been taught the things of God. Amen. Versus somebody that has not been taught the things of God. Amen. Can I tell you something? We better be thinking about it because if we ain't teaching them, do you want this world teaching them? No. No, no, no. Let's go a little bit further. Let's don't stop there. Come on. Because a lot of times we'll stop right there. What about our grandchildren? Come on. Yes, I don't know about you, but I don't want one of my kids missing heaven. Amen. And going to hell. I don't want one of my grandchildren Amen. missing heaven. Amen. And going to hell. I want them to go to heaven, Amen. don't you? It's yes. going to take a, come on. It's going to take a grandpa, a grandma, yes. a daddy, a mama, yes. a son, a Listen to me, it's time for us as a church to recognize in our families, it's time to say no to junk that we're allowed in our families. Oh me. Help me, Lord. Take my inability, God, and make an ability out of it. Yes, amen. Penetrate every heart in this place today, God. Yes. I promise you must not to hurt you today, but I want us to have an eye awakening and an encounter. Maybe somebody hadn't told you lately, but Jesus is coming back. Yes, amen. We want the blessings of God without the giving of God our hearts. So far, I've read to you, blessed, 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 blessed. Is there anybody in here want the blessings of God? Yes, amen. amen. Yes. Listen to what he says. I'm trying to finish this. Blessed are they are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Somebody that's got a pure heart will always repent. They will always, when they feel like they've wronged their brother, they will go all, always try to fix it back right. Verse 9 said, Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. God said today, church, we ain't got to go around trying to whoop everybody to prove our manhood. That's right. And there's been some of them I wanted to get a hold of. I'm preaching to me just as much as I am. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I ain't got to prove my man. You know, growing up, I thought I used to prove my manhood. I don't know how many bloody nose I got, Brad, busted mouths and black eyes and things of that sort. Thought I had to prove my manhood. Who do I got to prove anything to anymore? God, Amen. God. Amen. Who do you got to prove anything to anymore? God. God. The Bible said this. Amen. There are those who want to please men but do not want to please God. It is our job to please God and not worry about man. Oh man, I know I'm on something here. Yes. If this is the only sister's getting it, she's getting it. <laughs> What's this? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Come on, somebody. Yes. You are the salt of the earth. Now listen to this person. Look at that person next to you and say, Now listen up. He's talking now listen to you. He's talking to you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt is lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trotted under the foot of man. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a, camp, a bush, but on a candlestick. And watch this. And it giveth light unto all the house. And he says, watch this. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you realize the day that God says that you, that your works, watch this, either our works are glorifying Him or our works is dishonoring Him. Do you realize, I'll read something to you maybe you've never heard. I don't know, maybe you have. In Revelation 14 verse 13 says this, And I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, Right. Blessed are the dead which died in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Yes. Are you ready to hear this again? Yes. I heard, and he said, I, he said, the revelator John said, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead. He's saying this, A man that dies in God is a blessed man. A man that, what's this, that dies in the Lord is a, what's this, is a blessed person. Because he said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, the Spirit. Somebody say the Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit. That they may rest, they from, may rest from, their labors. from their labors. Watch this. That their works do follow them. If a man that is saved works follow him, do you think for a moment that somebody that's lost, that their deeds are not going to follow them? Let me read this and we're fixing to close. Brother Mark, would you come? Here it goes. I have brought to you today what I felt like God placed on my heart. Heaven's a beautiful place. Sheila, Thomas, rejoice. Mama, Tommy's rejoicing. Daddy, Tommy's rejoicing. Why? Because Jesus.
Jesus was in his heart. Yes. Amen. Nothing that Tommy had ever done. I was thinking about this and I couldn't help but just shed a few tears the other day. I got to thinking about Tommy and I got to thinking about him being singing in the choir. At one time he used to sing, go all over the place singing. You know now they're singing in a heavenly choir. Oh, yeah. oh I thought, how much better is that singing today? Oh, that's right. Oh, how much better is the singing? I don't know about yeah. you, but I'm looking forward to one day singing Amen. with the angels. Yes. And can I tell you, I'm going to be able to sing a song that they cannot sing. Amen. You know what that song is? Only the redeemed of the Lord can sing this song. Brad, I got to think about you, brother, the other day. <laughs> He's singing in the heavenly choir. Come on, somebody. Yes. He's singing in that heavenly choir because of who Jesus is. Oh, I got to tell somebody today, I want you to hear this. In, in the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, you may stand. To every person in this building, you've here today, and you've got a loved one that's went on. Paul said this in Corinthians, he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. go ahead and say this too. That graveyard out children looks beautiful. I pulled up this morning and I was thinking how pretty the grass looked mold. And I wanted to give some honor to somebody in this house this morning. Brother Brad, I want to honor you for keeping that mold out there. The last four or five years he's took care of that. Brother Brad, I want you to wave it. I want everybody to see you. I want you to look at Brad. I want you to give him a hand for that. Amen. Yeah. What is that called? That's called works. That's called bringing honor. What's this? For some reason or another, over the last several years, through fights I've had over the graveyards, I got to a place to work. I was sort of like felt disrespectful towards the dead, towards graveyards. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and said, carried my mind back and said, do not be disrespectful to the dead. Said, do you think they were disrespectful to the body of Jesus? Do you think they was disrespectful to the graves of the parents? Do you realize they would take and they would hear out tears? Amen. And they would put them in those places. In other words, the Holy Spirit said this. Amen. Don't dishonor the dead. Respect them. Amen. Amen. Because if we live long enough to... What's this? If, if we live on this earth long enough, before Jesus comes back, we too are going to be laying in one of those graves. Amen. Wouldn't you like to know that somebody cared enough to put a flower on your grave? Amen. Cared enough to mow your grave? Come on, somebody. I know you yes. ain't gonna know it. Amen. You're in heaven. But for some reason, now the Holy Spirit's dealt with me on this. Don't dishonor the dead. was in, a, in the tomb in the grave and they took him they took a man that died in battle and they took and throwed him in there on them bed bones and that man come alive come on somebody there might be something in that grave you need amen and it ain't graveyard religion either <laughs> let me read this to you I'm trying to it says for the Lord himself 
It's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the air, in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then he said this, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Brother Mark, would you turn it down just a little bit? Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Somebody's needing a touch today. This is your day. I want to ask just for a moment, every head bow, every eye 